What is the difference between symmetric key cryptography and public key cryptography? Symmetric key cryptography, symmetric encryption uses a single key for both encryption and decryption. Both users should agree or exchange the same key. Or symmetric key cryptography is useful if you want to encrypt files on your computer, and you intend to decrypt them yourself. It is less useful if you intend to send them to someone else to be decrypted, because in that case you have a key distribution problem. Securely communicating the encryption key to your correspondent may not be much easier than securely communicating the original text. It is used for bulk data transmission. It is safe and fast. The commonly used symmetric encryption algorithms are DAY, 3 day RC4. Public Key Cryptography Public key cryptography is also known as asymmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption uses a different key for encryption and decryption. In this two different keys required, public key and private key. Everyone can see the public key and only the one who has private key can decode the message. It is used for securely exchanging secret keys. The most common asymmetric encryption algorithm are Diffie-Hellman and RSA algorithm. What is salting? In cryptography, a salt is random data that is used as an additional input to a one-way function that hashes data, a password or passphrase. Salts are closely related to the concept of nonce. The primary function of salts is to defend against dictionary attacks or against its hashed equivalent, a pre-computed rainbow table attack. The use of salting is to make your passwords stronger and not easy to be cracked if you are someone who is prone to use of simple or ordinary words as passwords, Wiki says. What is password salting? It is a form of password encryption that involves appending a password to a given username and then hashing the new string of characters. This is usually done via an MD5 hashing algorithm. Password salting is most commonly found within Linux operating systems, and it is generally considered a more secure password encryption model than any of the models used within the various Microsoft distributions. What is Tracert? Tracert is a utility that traces a packet from your computer to an internet host, showing how many hops the packet requires to reach the host and how long each hop takes. If you're visiting a website and pages are appearing slowly, you can use Tracert to figure out where the longest delays are occurring. What is the difference between Vulnerability Assessment VA, and Penetration Testing PT? Vulnerability assessment is an approach used to find flaws in an application network whereas penetration testing is the practice of finding exploitable vulnerabilities like a real attacker will do. VA is like traveling on the surface whereas PT is digging it for gold. What is a honeypot? In computer terminology, a honeypot is a decoy computer system for trapping hackers or tracking unconventional or new hacking methods. Honeypots are designed to purposely engage in deceive hackers and identify malicious activities performed over the Internet. What is residual risk? Residual risk is defined as the threat that remains after every effort has been made to identify and eliminate risks in a given situation. In other words, it is the degree of exposure to a potential hazard even after that hazard has been identified and the agreed-upon mitigation has been implemented. Residual risk is the modified risk after internal controls have been implemented and monitored and the effect of their findings considered. What are the different ways in which the authentication of a person can be performed? Passwords Passwords is something that the user should know from when they started their activity. Token Tokens is something they are provided with and should have it. Biometrics Biometric is an internal property of that person registered for verification. ODP, a one-time PIN or password is sent to the user through which they verify the identity. What are the techniques used in preventing a brute force login attack? To avoid brute force login attacks, you generally have three kinds of techniques to go about. The first technique is to implement a policy for account lockout. In this method, an account will be locked out unless and until the administrator himself opens it. The second being progressive delays. In this method, after a few attempts of login, your account will stay locked for the next few number of days. Lastly, use a challenge response test. This prevents any kind of automatic submissions on the login page.
What are the major first steps for securing your Linux server? Every system has its own security softwares so for securing your Linux, the first three steps are Auditing A system scan is performed using a tool called Linux for auditing. Every category is scanned separately and a hardening index is provided to the auditor for further steps. Hardening After the audit is complete, the system is hardened depending on the level of security it further needs. It is an important process based on the decision of auditor. Compliance The system needs to be checked almost every day for better results and also lesser threats from security point of view. What is the need for DNS monitoring? The domain name system, DNS, allots your website under a certain domain that is easily recognizable and also keeps the information about other domain names. It works like a directory for everything on the internet. Thus, DNS monitoring is very important since you can easily visit a website without actually having to memorize their IP address. What is the three-way handshake? How can it be used to create a DOS attack? The three-way handshake is a cornerstone of the TCP suite, SEN, SEN slash ACK, acknowledgement SEN is the outgoing connection request from client to server. ACK is the acknowledgement of the server back to the client, saying that yes I hear you, let's open a connection. SEN slash ACK is the final connection, and allows the two to speak. The problem is that this can be used as a very basic type of denial of service attack. The client opens up the SYN connection, the server responds with the SYN slash ACK, but then the client sends another SYN. The server treats this as a new connection request and keeps the previous connection open. As this is repeated over and over many times very quickly, the server quickly becomes saturated with a huge number of connection requests, eventually overloading its ability to connect to legitimate users. What is a false positive and false negative in case of IDS? When the device generated an alert for an intrusion which has actually not happened, this is false positive and or if the device has not generated any alert and the intrusion has actually happened, this is the case of a false negative. What is the chain of custody? Chain of custody refers to the protocol for handling physical proof that will be introduced in a courtroom, ensuring evidence complies with the rules of criminal procedure. When keeping track of data or equipment for use in legal proceedings, it needs to remain in a pristine state. Therefore, documenting exactly who has had access to what for how long is vital when dealing with this situation. Any compromise in the data can lead to legal issues for the parties involved and can lead to a mistrial or contempt depending on the scenario. What is Black Hat, White Hat, and Gray Hat Hackers? Black Hat Hacker a black hat hacker may exploit security vulnerabilities for monetary gain, to steal or destroy private data, or to alter, disrupt or shut down websites and networks. The black hat hacker may also sell these exploits to other criminal organizations. White hat hacker White hat hackers are the opposite of the black hat hackers. They're the ethical hackers, experts in compromising computer security systems who use their abilities for good, ethical, and legal purposes rather than bad, unethical, and criminal purposes. Gray Hat Hacker A gray hat hacker falls somewhere between a black hat and a white hat. A gray hat doesn't work for their own personal gain or to cause carnage, but they may technically commit crimes and do arguably unethical things. While they do not hack into systems with the malicious goal of stealing data, they may be willing to use illegal methods to find flaws expose vulnerabilities to the public or sell zero-day exploits to government and intelligence agencies. What is exfiltration? Infiltration is the method by which you enter or smuggle elements into a location. Exfiltration is just the opposite, getting sensitive information or objects out of a location without being discovered. In an environment with high security, this can be extremely difficult but not impossible. Again we turn to our friends in the fake delivery uniforms wandering around the building, and see that yes there are ways to get in and out without a lot of issues. Or What is data exfiltration? Data exfiltration or data extrusion is the unauthorized transfer of data from a computer. The transfer of data can be manual by someone with physical access to the computer or automated, carried out through malware over a network. 
Because data routinely moves in and out of networked enterprises, data exfiltration can closely resemble normal network traffic, making detection of exfiltration attempts challenging for IT security groups. What is CSRF? Cross-site request forgery, CSRF, also known as XSRF, CSRF or session writing, is an attack vector that tricks a web browser into executing an unwanted action in an application to which a user is logged in. The attack itself is quite simple. A CSRF vulnerability allows an attacker to force a logged-in user to perform an important action without their consent or knowledge. It is the digital equivalent of an attacker forging the signature of a victim on an important document. Furthermore, the attack leaves no evidence behind, since a forged request contains all of the information and comes from the same IP address as a real request from a victim. What is misconfiguration? Security misconfiguration is simply that, incorrectly assembling the safeguards for a web application. These misconfigurations typically occur when holes are left in the security framework of an application by systems administrators, DBAs or developers. How can you defend yourself against CSRF attacks? When CSRF attacks, you can opt for two available methods. Firstly, with every request try to include a random token. In this way a unique string of tokens will be generated which is a good safeguard. Secondly, for each field of form, try using different names. This will somewhat help you in becoming anonymous due to the entry of so many different names and thus will behave as a safeguard from CSRF attacks. What is home network? A home network is a group of devices like computers, game systems, printers, and mobile devices that connect to the internet and each other. Home networks connect in two ways. A wired network, which connects devices like printers and scanners with cables. A wireless network, which connects devices like tablets and e-readers without cables. What is HTTPs? Is it more secure than HTTP? HTTPS, Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure, is a secure version of the HTTP web protocol that uses SSL or TLS and PKI to encrypt data in transit. The server responds with various SSL slash TLS options. The client issues a response encrypted with the server's public key so that the server can decrypt with its private. The use of HTTPS protects against eavesdropping and man-in-the-middle attacks. HTTPS is used by websites that collects sensitive customer data such as banking information, credit card information or purchasing information. So when you are making an online transaction, you must make sure that it is done over HTTPS so that your data is safe. What is SSL and TLS? SSL and TLS are both cryptographic protocols that provide authentication and data encryption between servers, machines and applications operating over a network. SSL, Secure Sockets Layer, SSL, is a standard security protocol for establishing encrypted links between a web server and a browser in an online communication. The usage of SSL technology ensures that all data transmitted between the web server and browser remains encrypted. SSL was deprecated for use on the Internet by the Internet Engineering Task Force, IATF, in 2015 and has been replaced by the Transport Layer Security, TLS, protocol. While TLS and SSL are not interoperable, DLS is backwards compatible with SSL 3.0. DLS, Transport Layer Security, TLS is a protocol that provides privacy and data integrity between two communicating applications. It's the most widely deployed security protocol used today, and is used for web browsers and other applications that require data to be securely exchanged over a network, such as file transfers, VPN connections, instant messaging and voice over IP. What are the common HTTP attacks? Some common HTTP attacks are SQL injection Input validation URL interpretation Impersonation Buffer overflow Session hijacking Cross-site scripting What is HIDS? Host Intrusion Detection System, HIDS, is one in which snapshot of the current system is taken and contrast to previous snapshots. 
it checks if critical files were modified or deleted then an alert is sent to the administrator. What is the website architecture? Website architecture is the planning and design of the technical, functional and visual components of a website, before it is designed, developed and deployed. It is used by website designers and developers as a means to design and develop a website. What is data leakage? Data leakage typically occurs when a brand, agency or a tech company collects data about a website's audience and subsequently uses that data without the initial publisher's permission. Data can get leaked through various ways, emails, prints, laptops getting lost, unauthorized upload of data to public portals, removable drives, photographs etc. What is WEP cracking? WEP cracking is the method of exploiting security vulnerabilities in wireless networks and gaining unauthorized access. What are the useful certifications for security analyst? Most useful certification for security analyst are Security Essentials, GSEC, it declares that candidate is expert in handling basic security issues it is the basic certification in security. Certified Security Leadership, CSL, it declares the certification of management abilities and the skills that is required to lead the security team. Certified Forensic Analyst it certifies the ability of an individual to conduct formal incident investigation and manage advanced incident handling scenarios including external and internal data breach intrusions. Certified Firewall Analyst CFA, it declares that the individual has proficiency in skills and abilities to design, monitor and configure routers, firewalls and perimeter defense systems. What are the techniques used to prevent web server attacks? Antivirus and firewalls. Safe installation and configuration of the web server software. Patch management. Secure installation and configuration of the OS. Scanning system vulnerability. Remote administration disabling. Removing of unused and default account. Changing of default ports and settings to customs port and settings. Subscribe to our channel, Interview Gig. Visit our website for more articles and interview questions and answers. www.interviewgig.com Like share and comment. Don't forget to click the subscribe button. Click the bell button for latest updates.